Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. The VCT for EMEA is back in action with some very interesting results going down last night, especially in terms of what might well be the most competitive league in the entire world of Valorant at the present time. But FNS gives his thoughts on which team is not as likely to win Masters Shanghai as they were to win Masters Madrid. He does not believe Sintels will be able to maintain the level as the best team in the world all the way to Masters in Shanghai. Is he right to believe as such? Very much in to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, I don't I shared this clip briefly for you guys yesterday, but I just wanted to dive into some of the drama here because it got kind of spicy, I'm not going to lie. So there was this moment on stream. Now this guy, Light Edits, kind of edited this together. So I didn't watch the entire stream and broadcast to know exactly what was happening and what the context was of this whole situation. And I imagine there is more to this that Gina was frustrated about than initially met the eye. But it caused some, uh, well, some drama for sure, right? Because as Luna Fox is going to plant the spike here, she's told the comm, plant the spike, you can res, right? Of course, with Clove. And then Juna says, she knows, right, type thing, which is kind of implying that it's a bad com or back seating or whatever. So if you guys have, you know, obviously played FPSs to this type of level with when people actually communicate decently, it's always a bit of a debate. What should you com in those moments? What shouldn't you com? And personally speaking, if I'm in a situation like that, pressure, one versus one situation, I've got a lot to think about. My teammate comes in and says, hey, you know, you can plant, you've got your res, or you've got four bullets in your gun, then, you know, I think to me that's a good com. If somebody tells me three bullets and all I've got is three bullets in the Vandal, then I'm thinking, okay, yeah, probably I do want to reload. Or if there's 25 seconds left, I'm in a 1v1 and they say, you can rotate, you know, that's good. I don't have to do so. But it's just extra information that if four guys are dead, quite often it can be useful for them to say something if that potentially helps. So it was a big controversy, really, because they got into a whole heated debate about this, whether it was a good con, whether it was fair. So Juno actually replies and says, like, um, what I've learned is that you can't discuss nuanced topics here, but um, as someone who has had the displeasure of playing the game as a woman for years, it's not hard to be annoyed by this. And she goes on to explain why the, um, you know, this was problematic. And the, she then actually says, like, it's not a bad com, but I felt like it was backseating, which is, you know, I don't know. I think there was a, a debate on that. I thought it seemed like from the clip a perfectly reasonable common situation. But then, you know, without the full context, it's difficult to say. And I know that people were saying actually to, uh, you know, light edit to edited the clip initially that, you know, with the full context, it makes him look much worse. But then also this guy, Nick, quote tweets Judah and says, I've had the displeasure of playing with you on multiple times. It's never been a good experience. So light edits is awful, but he was just trying to help. He wasn't backseating. So, you know, it caused a lot of drama. I don't really have sides on this one. I know that Shazam as well was getting into it and basically saying that like he was editing a video in a certain way to make it look bad for Juna and um, you know that's why the drama really happened. So I was surprised how much this blew up to be fair like that had 25,000 likes, this and Shazam had 11,000 likes and it kept on going actually because WestJet tweeted this out which is now been copyright claimed as we'll see in a second. So there was a clip from Shazam's stream where he had Ray's ult and his teammate told him hey you've got you've got ult you know you've got Ray's ult and he was like oh are you sure like I didn't know and then he fires it off into the air and gets the final kill. It's a pretty funny clip actually for both sides but the point is that like Shazam also wasn't happy with getting backseated, as it were, right? Because Shazam was like, oh, I know I built, like, what are you telling me type thing? Stop distracting me, which I get that angle for sure. But um, I also think that sometimes it just doesn't really hurt. And uh, the funny thing was that he then got a DMCA strike for this from Shazam, which, you know, I guess he's within his rights to do. But, um, you know, it was pretty entertaining nonetheless. So let's move on from that. A couple of other things to mention. First of all, we have this, the Red Bull Instalot tournament in London coming up very shortly and Shopify Rebellion, the best game changer team in the world, will be attending that one. So April 20th through to the 21st, that's where they're going to be. And as Mel says, you know, we're going to interlock three duelists. What duelist should we play in the tournament? But let's talk about some of the VCT games that are continuing to go on. This is pretty funny to think about, right? Because some of the groups, as it stands, do not look especially balanced. And one example is in the Americas where MIVR have not played a game yet. And yet because they are zero and zero, and everybody else is zero and one, they're actually top of the group as it stands, which is pretty stunning and outrageous. But we did have games in EMEA. Team Heretics versus Vitality. And this was very interesting to see and goes to show to me, I think, how 
competitive EMEA is right now. I actually think that it might be the most competitive league. There is a good argument to say for that because let's be honest, did we predict Carmine Corp and, um, and Team Heretics to be the two teams that made it to Madrid? No. Did they play the best Valorant at the event? Yes. But would I have expected them to maintain that level? Not necessarily. I'm expecting Fnatic to make a bit of a comeback. Na'Vi are very good, as are other teams. So for T-Sports, another great example. They play KC yesterday and they win this series with relative ease. Sure, it was 2-1, but seeing that this entire series was an absolute force of nature. KC win Foot's pick on bind 13-11, but then Lotus goes 13-8 to them, and then the Breeze is 13-7 to Fede Sports. So phenomenal work for these guys. We know they're good, but um, for them to beat... Carmen Corp in a pretty emphatic manner here was I thought particularly impressive. And then the other series that really shows the competition in this league is then Vitality Heretics because again Heretics the other team that made it to Madrid they've been looking good lately but you know a lot of the time for these guys if Mini Boo, well look, he performed very well and still Heretics are in a bit of a funky spot because they don't have the full roster they want, Roots can't get their visa stuff and all this. So a bit problematic and Vitality are a solid team for sure. Like since we talked about Liquid, since they lost safe, has been problematic for them. Seems like the other way around to me for Vitality now, they've got him onto the team. But yeah, tough series for Boo. Mini Boo is incredibly good, so like nobody denies this. One of the best players in the world right now, incredibly consistent fragger as well. But Boo also needs to deliver, and that didn't happen this series, and Patty Tech is still there to fit in and do a job, but Vitality went 13-9, they lost 13-11, but then 13-9 on the icebox as well to close out the series. So, um, yeah, what a crazy turn of events here, really. And now it becomes very difficult, if not nigh on impossible, to call which teams are actually the best in the EMEA. For eSports, have now set up a 2-0 convincing record so far. Liquid are 2-0. Carmen Corp are 2-1. So it's all to play for in the EMEA side. Senior had a great performance as well here on the Fiddy Sports team, of course, as they took that victory down. But I wanted to share what FNS had to say because he was actually discussing here on um, the composition that Fiddy Sports are running on the Lotus. And he's like, there's no way that team should get nine attack rounds with no initiator. But um, yeah, worked out rather well for those guys. But I'll share what FNS had to say here on the series, but also about going forwards to Masters Shanghai. We've had Masters Madrid. The next one is Shanghai. After that, of course, it's the World Championship, right? First of all, you've got to qualify for Shanghai. That's going to be hard enough given the competition in these regions then once you get there you got to try and win fns has asked the question are Sintels going back to back are they going to do what fanatic couldn't last year and win every international event fns says it ain't gonna happen that's it i'm not answering any more questions if you guys can't answer for Cned, easy Wait, what? pickings with three quick kills. This round seems to be done and dusted. I swear to God, no one else's ghost works like that. Like it, normally, you'd see someone spam 15 bullets hey, in the back of their head. Cned, though, he just doesn't. He doesn't miss at all. This is why yeah, you want to see damn. this man on jet. Don't give me a chamber. Don't give me a bloody euro. Put this man on jet, and he'll take over the game. That's what he does. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's different on this and team. There's no stopping him here. Your mouse? Okay. 17 kills on this map like already. It, it doesn't. Like, I've seen so many players so behind clean. someone like, oh, oh, I'm going to get him. And then you see a whole clip just shot into their butt crack. Like, it's the hardest shot to hit behind them. <laughs> three. But you can see this guy's. You know what Do you think means? old optic stands a chance yeah, against current set? I definitely set? think on this map it's going to be more difficult. Mm -hmm. But I, I think if there's expectations, maybe C then can come in with a marshal. I, I think that would be the one Fucking thing that can slaughter them. Things. I like this over from Casey. I think especially Martin getting. Do you think Sen would win Shanghai? Guys. I don't think so. I just don't think so. But even if like hater is it has instantly idea, types okay. hater. Me, me, the Sen hater, me, the that. guy that was saying Sen the is gonna win, me, I'm the hater. The thing is, I would think Sen was gonna win if Cloud9 wasn't in the picture. I said Sen was good, Sen's insane. Now I've said NRG is good, watch what NRG does, and then you guys are just gonna come here and say sorry again. I said DFM was gonna win, what happened? DFM won, your boy does not miss unless it's in the server. Is that simple? Just, if I say something, stop arguing with me, just agree. Why are you Bring it up, Billy Billy. I wasn't the one that said we're not gonna lose to them. That was artists. I did my best. So interesting opinions there from FNS, but I think that given, you know, respective probabilities, he's absolutely right. There are 44 teams in Global Valorant right now. 
getting to the top is hard enough. Staying at the top is another challenge, another step even further and more challenging than that. Also, Sen Bundle, it seems he's stepping away, so he's going to go back to Zelsis. I think he did try to get his gamer chat tamed to Bundle. I think he did try and get his gamer tag changed to bundle, but I right won't have it. So apparently he's going to have to go back to being Zelsis yet again, unfortunately. But this is the team, of course, that won the kickoff in the Americas and then also Masters Madrid. And assuming they qualify for Shanghai, which they probably will, it's just there's so many other teams that could win. Like if you had to predict right now, Sentinels to win Shanghai or any other team to win Shanghai you've got to say the probabilities are with the field over Sentinels. Like, Sin are very good, but they're not that much better than the competition to imagine that they would be favourites against everybody else. Gen G coming back with a vengeance, of course. There's Paper Rex as well with Jing back in the team. Even in the Americas, NRG, Loud. So, you know, other top teams that are doing well and look particularly impressive. Maybe even Loud doesn't count after what happened against NRG the other day, but, you know, C9 and these other teams looking kind of promising. And then in EMEA, who knows? You've got Fit Esports, you've got Vitality, you've got Fnatic, you've got Na'Vi, all these other teams that could potentially make a run, right? So I think that he's probably correct that on the balance of probabilities, Sentinels probably aren't going to win Shanghai. It would be an incredible accomplishment for them to do so, but like getting to this point is one thing, maintaining this level of performance is another thing, especially because every single team team in the world is watching Sentinel's VOD right now and try to understand where they go from here to try and actually beat them. And this is why what Fnatic did last year was very impressive, but they turned up to the championship as favourites and they were kind of crushed out top four in the end, couldn't deliver what they were hoping for. So might not be the end of the world for Sen if they weren't to win Shanghai, but they've got to qualify first of all. And look, if you've got one win of the year, why not go for every single one that you can possibly get? But very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.